So did you, Vinod, were you watching that last company? Yeah. The door lock? So that was part of our hackathon. They were the winner. But do, and one thing I didn't realize is the whole thing comes off with Velcro. And, and our the guy runs security for the conference is like, hmm, maybe that's not so great. Yeah, no, I was going to check that out. It was pretty neat. Yeah, but if you can remove the whole thing with Velcro, I don't get it. Seems like there's something missing. I don't oh, know. Oh, I suspect they're just driving the bolt magnetically <laughs> from the outside. And it's good to see everybody here. Yeah, th thank you for coming. This is, uh, this is my last interview, and I usually get a little punchy at the end, so I apologize in advance, but <laughs> we're going to have some fun. I always have fun with you on stage. I, I can punch back. <laughs> so um, when, uh, when, I do, when I did the research for you, I noticed something I haven't noticed in the past. Almost any time your name appears on the internet, it says the word legendary next to it. Have you noticed that? How do you get to that spot? Is that, did that start in the 90s? Did it start more recently? I want you know, that. No, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not even sure it's a good thing. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. I, I just. <laughs> this doesn't really need a serious I, I, answer. I don't yeah. worry about those things. I, we've yeah. had this big battle inside Coastal Ventures for a long time. Oh, really? Where I refuse to hire any PR person yeah. for Coastal Ventures okay. or hire any firm to do PR for Coastal Ventures. Okay. Um, we've just hired somebody to do PR for our companies okay. uh, as part of our operating team. Yeah. But I've refused to do that, and I think that may be the key, being completely yeah. unsophisticated about it. Huh. Okay. It's still pretty cool, no matter how you look at it. So. <laughs> Uh, let's see, you're currently investing your billion dollar general fund, you're part way through that, and you also have a relatively new $375 million seed fund. Uh, what are you focused on right now? So, we're doing a broad range of things. We're probably a broader range investor than most venture funds. We're doing the usual internet, mobile stuff, the kinds of things you guys are doing, Series A investors in the whole series of companies like Jawbone or Square or we are talking about Lookout, which is by yep. far the largest mobile security firm. Um, and then cool new things, we just did Bitly, we announced that. Yep. One of my favorite new ones is Wattpad, yeah. W-A-T-T-P-A-D, largest short story creative writing site in the world. Um, um, we've done Learn Street, um, Hacker Rank is here, Interview Street. Yep. Um, Zabni, lots of fun stuff in the internet space. And you were generally one of, if not the first investor in these companies. Yeah, by and large, we like being the first investor because my mm -hmm. fundamental view is um, it's not about funding a company, it's not about the cash, it's about helping a company. And what I find is when we get involved early, we yeah. help them build a better team. Uh, we're a real pain in the ass about yeah. hiring. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, yeah, you have that reputation. Now, I probably spend more of my time hiring than any other single thing I do, recruiting yeah. for our companies. And so anybody has a great resume, send it to me anytime. I'll personally pay attention. Um, so we spend a lot of time, and I find that if you can hire the best first 10 or 15 people, yeah. They then hire the other uh, really good people. Yeah. Once you hire the wrong people, and companies often come to us with complete management teams or others that are sort of mediocre, because yeah. a great founder didn't know who a great marketing person was and hired the wrong one, it's really hard to get a company back on track. Yeah. And so um, we're very much focused on that. But going back to everything we're investing in, so yeah. there's that. We're doing a surprising amount of enterprise stuff, um, really cool stuff. Uh, for a long time, nobody's done a new computer architecture. We're doing that. Nobody's done a new router architecture. We're yeah. doing that. So you're talking about Big Switch and Nutanix. Yeah, Nutanix yeah. is a new computer company. Yeah. Big Switch is a new router company. We had done Juniper, and of course, I'd done Sun. Yeah. Um, we're doing big data, very, very cool stuff in big data. I know you find it boring, but... Oh, yeah. uh, um, the, the, you know, I just don't understand it, but please go on yet. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it, it's boring if you, or you don't understand it if you sort of just say it's incremental stuff over what's yeah. there. Okay. 
Uh, so I'm sort of way tired of Hadoop. I think the thing to do in big yeah. data is to say, what's cooler than Hadoop? What's next yeah. after it? One of the very cool companies is uh, a company called IASDE that if your data is so large, you don't even know what questions to ask it. It helps you figure yeah. out what questions you should ask the data. Uh, I saw a great demonstration of it where um, the, the data determined you should ask the question, what day of the work, week does each keyword work best in a Yahoo advertising campaign? Now, I would never know, and these people didn't know to ask the question. Yeah. But it figured out that that was an important question to ask. Yeah, so, I imagine you can so make that's a lot of money really to that. cool big data stuff. Um, we're still doing clean tech. Yeah, I don't we've get. Uh, talk about clean tech because you know yeah. a lot of people have sort of wavered from yeah. that, but you're you still believe in it. Yeah. So we're yeah. big believers in clean tech. We just had a, a three-day-long offsite and said we are going to keep doing that in a pretty aggressive way. Yeah. We'll probably do a smaller number of companies and invest much more per company because there are fewer co-investors around. It's a little bit out of passion. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we're doing very well with it. We are very happy with it, so we've decided to keep doing more of it. Doesn't clean tech need the government to get involved to make something successful? They pick Absolutely winners, they not. Money. So yeah. this is the fallacy, and that's what I call fashion clean tech. Okay. Fashion clean tech is where you're relying on subsidies or policy. Yeah. There's plenty of areas where you don't need that. Like what? Uh, so we have this coolest company called Sora introduced an MR16 lamp. Uh, there's probably a bunch of those around here. You just buy it. And you buy it because it pays for itself in a few months, and yeah. it's a lot better and keeps saving you money. Um, what about no all policies, stuff, uh... no subsidies. We just do it. Uh, let me give you the data. This is okay. really surprising to people. I think we've done 11 equity finance, uh, 11 companies have done financings this year. About yeah. a half a billion raised in those 11 companies, yeah. every single one an up round. Are these, now, this is clean tech you're talking this about. This is yeah. clean tech only. Okay. Uh, half a billion raised in equity financing and about yeah. a billion and a half raised in project financing by these companies every single one in up round. So there are naysayers. Um, we've had a pretty great markups this year yeah. in both our um, private portfolio and then the public portfolios go up and down. Yeah. Who cares, uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, but on clean tech, is there any science fiction-y stuff that, that's being explored out there? Like really cool laser beam hovercrafts? So, we are doing lightsabers, like you know, cool stuff. Lightsabers, no lightsabers, but there is yeah. very cool stuff. Like what? Uh, well, so how do you do air conditioning without having a compressor? I don't know, but that's not cool. It is very cool because it involves all <laughs> kinds of thermoelectric material science and complex modeling. Um, mentioned another one, Lightsail, one of uh, one of our recent. Uh, actually, we've been in it for three or four years. Okay. Uh, just did a financing. Um, they're saying the best way to build a battery is to store energy, electricity in compressed air, not in chemistry. Are they, they're, they're, are they doing more than saying that? Have they shown it to work? Uh, they're demonstrating it. Okay. Um, cool. It's a, a, you know, if you want grid scale storage, like yeah. hundreds of megawatt hours, yeah. You've got to do it in something that works at very large scale. Light yeah. sales doing that. Yeah. The other area we've had a lot of fun with is as part of our sustainability effort, we're doing a lot of investment in food. Yeah, well, I was going to get to that. But go oh, ahead. You're going to get yeah. to that? Well, I was going to say, like, you talked to me about a lettuce picking operation that you've funded, among other things. Let's talk about all of these because they're amazing. I, yeah. So we've done a candy company. Some of you, I saw some uh, Unreal candy around. We've done that. We've done a salt company. Yeah, what's the deal with the salt company? Yeah, so sodium's one of the larger problems. Most people have high blood, a lot of people have high blood pressure. Yeah. Um, we're trying to do salt that tastes as good as salt, as much as, as salty as salt, I should say, yeah. and 50% less sodium. So that's, that's a company we're doing. Uh, believe it or not, we're doing a high-tech beef company. 
Yeah. And we're doing cheese and eggs and a few other things. Uh, if you have a great idea, come our way. Um, so the beef come, it's still cows. It's not like you're making beef in a machine or something, right? Would no, there's no cows involved. There'll be vegan beef. Oh, which is awesome. Right? Yeah. The goal is you can't tell the difference when you taste it. Are you being serious or kidding? I'm being absolutely serious. You're talking about tofu right now. I'm not talking about tofu beef. I'm talking about what? something when you put it on the grill, browns like a burger, it smells like a burger, tastes like a burger, and you can't tell the difference. I've heard that one before. It's, what, what's it made out of? Is it made out of beef? No, it's made out of proteins and mm, fats and yeah. fibers. Have you tried it? I've tried it. We're not there yet. <laughs> but, hey, this is R&D. This is high-risk stuff. Yeah. But I will tell you the following. Okay. We're also doing the same thing with cheese, non-dairy cheese. Um, I'm waiting to be sued to call it cheese. Uh, that'll be good yeah. publicity. It'll work. Yeah. Um, but I had um, a couple of people taste the cheese against comparable dairy cheese, and they couldn't tell the difference. Yep. Yeah. So those are the tasks. I just never quite know what these conver where these conversations are going to go when I get up on stage. So <laughs> the, you've got beef that tastes nothing like beef, but may at some point taste like beef. There's an, there's an important you've got point cheese. here. I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. The important point is, if you said to somebody three years ago that you could reinvent payments or that you could compete against PayPal, yeah. most people would say that's a crazy idea. Payments is done. It's boring. Um, Jack Dorsey, we funded the Series A. Of Square. Yeah. yeah. There was some, a key piece of it about, there was a recent Wired Magazine article about Square. What Jack said was, the reason they've been successful is out of the 250 people at the company, no more than five came from the payments business. Yeah. My important point is, whether it's beef or food or payments, or healthcare, and we should talk about consumerization of healthcare is the only way to upend healthcare as we know it. It'll dramatically change, and maybe I can show my little toy. Yeah. Um, let show it now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or whatever. So yeah. let me finish my yeah. point, and now I'll show you. Innovation can happen in every area, whether it's yeah. payments or healthcare or exercise devices from Jawbone, we investors in Misfit. Uh, um, we are investors in a company called AliveCore, which is this little company. I don't know if you can uh, uh, focus the camera on it. This is just an iPhone yeah. with a little iPhone case. iPhone, old iPhone, not today's Do we have iPhone. A handheld, the guy with the handheld camera? Um, yeah, if not. But it's if, a case I, with a sensor on the back. With yeah. a sensor on the yeah. back, I fire it up, and within go. about 30 seconds, yeah, people could see it. You see my EKG on it. My heart rate's a little higher than it is normally resting, but uh, you can see an EKG yeah. machine built into your device. Now, it's about 85% of the information content of a full 12-lead ECG where they stick you with all kinds of stuff yeah. and costs. Um, for about the cost of sticking the first lead, you could buy this EKG machine. Yeah, and you could buy those now, you said, right? Yeah, you could buy it today. Yeah. It's not FDA approved for humans, but you can buy it for your dog. Where? What's the site? <laughs> the company is called AliveCore, A-L-I-V-E-C-O-R. Yeah. Uh, but the point I was making is, whether, and we have a similar dermatology company called CellScope, and whether it's Jawbone or CellScope or AliveCore, we have a neat new company. Talk about real science. A little chip you can put on your wrist. If you breathe on it, it'll tell you whether you're, you're, you have ketones in your breath, you're, you're diabetic, whether you're about to have an asthma attack because it Ooh. detects nitrous oxide, or okay. whether you have lung cancer or breast cancer. It might even be able to tell you what type of lung cancer you have because you can detect hundreds of gases in a single chip that should cost yeah. five bucks. Everything electronic costs five bucks. Uh, my point is, innovation, especially technology-driven innovation, is in every area, no matter what you think of. You, who would have imagined beef? I'm glad you went back to that. I'm still trying to figure out what's in it. Is it it's not soy. It's something, is it, is it? No, it's not soy. 
you can take any protein. Right. So purification of proteins is an important component of the technology. Yeah. But you could take soy protein. You could take corn protein. Okay. Uh, that's what we feel feed cattle to make normal yeah. beef. When you take corn protein, which is corn, and feed it to cattle and put it on your table as steak, a kilogram of steak on your table costs 15 kilograms of corn and about 3,000 liter, liters of water yeah. to produce. A little bit variable because of the circumstances, but those are the economics of producing beef. They're lower efficiency in converting yeah. plant protein into animal protein than your solar cell is. Sure. Right? Single digit efficiency. Obviously, it's a process that can be improved. It's a $100 billion market just making burgers. Yeah. Um, huge market, open to technology. I'll still say this. A cow, uh, you're basically describing a cow as a beef making machine that's not very efficient. I'll say that the, the end product is pretty good when it comes to like wanting beef. And Yours, what if you can't tell the difference? That's the benchmark. I'm all for it if we can't tell the difference. That's the plan. But I know, I quote Vinokosa, the legendary Vinokosa saying, it's not quite there yet, which tells me it probably tastes pretty awful, right? No, it doesn't taste pretty awful. I, yeah. It actually tastes way better than any, uh, any soy burger I've ever tasted. Okay. Way better. All right. Okay? Yeah. But this is a company that's nine months old. We have a product development process. And this brings me to this other issue, which is one of my favorite issues. Many of you have heard me talk about it. Uh, people are afraid to fail. And I like to say my willingness to fail is what gives me the ability to succeed. But you don't want to try incremental stuff. Because I don't mind failing. I'll invest in technologies <coughs> like this breath analyzer. Yeah that has a 90% chance of failure, as long as if we succeed, it's worth succeeding. Yeah. Now, most people in the venture capital business focus on reducing risk to the point where I believe the consequences of success are inconsequential. I like working on things where if you succeed, it's consequential. Yeah. If you don't, great, do another project. Yeah. Um, so, I like high impact projects. I don't mind failure. The press likes to write about failure. They can write all they want. Yeah. Doesn't bother me. Not at all. Nope. Yeah. So what do we want to talk about next? Oh, I got good stuff now. I wanted to get through all your portfolio companies and talk about the beef stuff. I, w I do one last question. The lettuce picking thing, you glossed over that, but I want to understand, is this to replace workers or is it to help workers be more efficient or, or I don't even know what lettuce picking looks like. So what? Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Let me generalize that and explain what yeah. this is. So we just invest in a company to first, when you plant lettuce, plants grow up and they should be idly spaced a certain distance apart. So this is sort of machine learning, computer vision uh, robot that picks lettuce and plant, uh, makes sure that the plants are appropriately based apart, and then eventually to pick the lattice. Um, highly efficient. Within 50 miles of here, there's probably a billion dollar market in just the labor that goes into thinning lattice and picking lattice. It's a computer science problem. So we've invested in that. That's part of our okay. ag practice, which is related to both our sustainability yeah. and food practice. Okay. Um, the more general case is an area that will surprise everybody over the next 10 years, in my view, is this whole area of machine <coughs> learning. It's a derivative of big data, because you yeah. use data for something. You learn it from machine learning, um, computer vision, lots of applications of that, and it will start to shock us. Okay. It's already shocking that the Google dr driverless car has driven 300,000 miles. Yeah. Sure as hell, if he can do that, we can pick lettuce. Right? But my favorite new application for that is 80% of what doctors do can be replaced by good diagnostic software. So when it comes to diagnostics and prescription, 
Remember, I'm not talking about being the front end to making a patient feel nice. But the real diagnostics, I want computer software to do, not a doctor who hasn't read the last 5,000 articles on the disease I have, the science papers. Yeah. Huh? I want a doctor to do the, the machine to do that diagnosis, and then the doctor can make you feel nice about it. So I don't mean to replace the human touch, but yeah. frankly, the difference between the doctor and the nurse practitioner yeah. sort of disappears then. See, now you're and talking. in that sense, you don't need doctors. This sounds awesome. This sounds better than the, than the tofu beef. It sounds like you're actually, yeah. You can solve the healthcare problem if you fix this with software. I'm absolutely yeah. convinced that healthcare will be solved from the outside in. So I showed you my little machine. Yeah. Now, if I am a heart patient, I'm not, thank God, but if I were, I'd do an AKG every morning, like I might do my blood glucose test, or every time I exercise, yeah. or every time I'm feeling a little weird, or heady, or faint. Or, and if I sent these 400 EKGs to my doctor, what's he gonna do? Scratch his head, yeah. and say, here comes that crazy guy again. I'll send it to my software, who'll point it to the two waveforms he should look at, and maybe he yeah. can look at it. And after t that plus 10 years, and I won't need him to look at my waveform. Yeah. Great. Huh? I might still need a surgeon to do heart surgery if I need it. Hope I don't. And so doctors will not be replaced in all functions, but 80% yeah. of diagnostics and prescription will be done by software. It's an order, one to two orders of magnitude simpler problem than driving a car without a driver. Yeah. It's a much simpler machine learning problem. It will be solved. It will solve healthcare. And for the 500 million people in India who've never seen a doctor because they can't afford one, it'll be an absolute godsend delivered through their mobile phone. Yeah. Um, and so doctors get all... They like that, yeah. And and then doctors can do the nice thing and make you feel good. You know, I, here's another example of this machine learning thing. I know I'm wandering all over the place. Uh, one of these major firms that does wealth management, if, if you're a successful entrepreneur, they'll, swarms of them will descend on you to manage your wealth. Um, and they'll make you feel good about all these options. One major firm I know, most of it is constructed by software, Mm. The guy who comes presents to you, the wealth manager, is just a friend end. Might as well be your, uh, your next door neighbor telling you about it, because he just makes you feel good. The real analysis, the real recommendations based on your real preferences yeah. is done by the, by the machine. That'll happen in all these areas. It'll get more personalized to the user. People think if a machine does the analysis of your disease, it'll be less personalized. It will be more personalized. It will be better than your average physician because sure. the machine will have read the latest science article on diabetes. So are you, does this company exist? Are you building it? Um, it or? doesn't exist. I've looked at half a dozen things in this area. I definitely want to do something in this area. It doesn't exist. IBM is working on this problem with IBM Watson, the same machine that won Jeopardy. But I do believe multiple versions of this will happen. It won't happen overnight, and it won't happen directly. It'll happen from the periphery, very small apps, coalescing over 10, 20 years into something. Yeah. It'll first be a physician's assistant, and then eventually it'll replace the physician and get much better than the average doctor. I have no question, doing better than the average doctor is easy. Doing, and so we want to take the top 20% of doctors and amplify them and their yeah. great diagnostic skills. If I want diagnosis, I want a Dr. House that doing my diagnosis, and everybody will be able to have Dr. House. <laughs> On, um, Without his bedside manners, your regular physician can be the bedside manners. I, I, on Sunday, I'm changing the subject, because um, you got three rounds of applause on that. You posted a, t a TechCrunch post on Sunday um, that's titled, Do You Need to Be a Jerk to Be a Successful Entrepreneur? And you said things like, etiquette is great until it gets in the way. Talk about this a little bit. What, what do you mean by all this? 
So, uh, how many people raise hands have seen this post? Uh, some, not everybody. There was a Wired magazine article on Steve Jobs that essentially said that to be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to be a jerk. Yeah. I don't believe that article is right, and this blog was a response to that article. What I contend is you have to be very firm. So you can't tolerate B players. You got to get rid of them if you hire any and make any hiring mistakes. Yeah. But you don't have to do it as a jerk. You can be very fair yeah. in how you do it. Um, one time, we made a wrong decision in a co-founder. 90 days, we had to terminate him, and I decided against advice of the other founders to vest him 100% after 90 days. He made $500 million on that 90 oh, days worth of work. You mean nice like that? I thought you were saying nice like, hey, you're so fired. So I'm getting to that. So yeah, but you, you, you can, if people aren't performing, put them in a different job where they can perform or fire yeah. them. You can do it fairly, yeah. maybe even generously. You yeah. don't have to be a jerk about it, okay. but you have to be extremely firm about not tolerating B players. Yeah. The other thing that I think you're referring to is there's a statement on our website that we prefer brutal honesty to hypocritical politeness. Most of the time when you talk to people, you get hypocritical politeness. They say, oh, your app is great. Well, if it's crappy, tell the entrepreneur that you'll save them time. What about Good etiquette are... gets in the way of accurate feedback. And your job is not, and uh, my job as a VC is not to be the entrepreneur's friend. My job is to push them to be better, to give them accurate feedback without the politeness, but with, I don't have to be a jerk about it. Sometimes yeah. I get carried away and say, you really screwed up. But I can say it more nicely, I, I'm working on it. Um, but my job is to drive entrepreneurs to be better, to do more, and to achieve greater heights. And I think that's what a mentor should do. That's why I never no. call myself a VC. I call myself a venture assistant. That's what our website says. That's what it said in 2004 when we started the website. Yeah. And my job is to push people, to challenge them to do better, hire better people, hire yeah. higher quality people. I interview a lot. To have them think about things they're not thinking about. If they're screwing up, to make push them to realize they're screwing up, or at least think about the things I'm, I think they're screwing up on. Well, you, you talk so much and, and, and about helping companies, and you spend so much time with them. I, I want to, we're not gonna have time, I wanna go into a whole discussion about what is an A player, and how many people in this audience are A players. Like, what if you're a B player? What do you do? But that's, I don't wanna get into that now, because I wanna give you a chance to talk about something else I think you wanna talk okay. about more. You add so much value. You talk about the people you have. You have six people on staff just to help with ops. You have, I think, another six helping with marketing and human resources. You spend more time than any of your peers, and by peers, I mean the legendary three or four VCs that go down in history. You spend way more time than probably all of them put together with your, with your entrepreneurs. You're known for this. You're hard on them. You work them hard, but they come out the other end better. What do you think about things like Y Combinator? What do you think about angel firms? Like, do they, are they even necessary? Uh, angels are good because they help people run experiments. Yeah. But the mistake people make, entrepreneurs make, is they don't get the right help. And way more than money, entrepreneurs need mentoring and coaching, I believe and thinking about how they can be much bigger and better. Um, that generally gets missed in this sort of angel yeah. incubator idea. Um, one of the, I feel sad sometimes for Y Combinator companies that get so much hype that they get valuations which nobody who's going to help a team is going to pay. Now, that's not to say all teams are like that. There's plenty of smart teams um, that we funded out of Y Combinator, and we love doing that. Yeah. But they're the teams that sort of say, I, what I'm looking for is the help and mentorship. Yeah. And too much of the polish, too much of the five-slide deck 
goes, takes a company away from it, creates the hype that prevents them from getting the help. If they can get the hype and the help, great. Some angels are awesome. There's angels we seek out as yeah. co-investors to help companies. Yeah. But it's about whether people can help a company or not get better, bigger. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I said, Two things, if you think about these, your company will be five times bigger. Yeah. Now, whether you buy 20% of the company or 22%. You say that or, a lot about five times bigger. That's a key metric for you, right? Uh, to me, if I can't have an entrepreneur, push an entrepreneur is probably the right thing because I can yeah. be pretty grueling on entrepreneurs sometimes to think about how they can be five or 10 times bigger in their yeah. business. Then I'm not doing my job. Yeah. Right? And it's painful sometimes. And some people uh, say, hey, do this in small doses, uh, right? That, that's okay. But my job yep. is to have them think about you building business X, how do you build something 10X, um, or expand your vision, or add the person who let you realize your vision. Yeah. Um, in the case of the comp letter speaking company I mentioned, I, I, instead of focusing on what their business plan is, I said, Here's the three people you need to go from letter speaking to being a generalized solution to agriculture and be a much, much larger company. Yeah. And I'm only re I've refused to talk to them other than about the hiring they're going to do. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to laser-like focus in on machine learning hiring because it could be a massive company if this do a generalized yeah. solution as opposed to a quick hack. So those are examples. I believe that's the role VCs should play. Yeah. Um, that's mostly not happened, and one of the things we've done is I spend all of my time between recruiting and this kind of, I had a three-hour session with the Bitly guys this morning only talking about where yeah. they could take their business in the future. Yeah. I, I didn't attend like the board even meeting. Even shorter URLs? or uh, Even shorter URLs. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. We know it's a big data yeah. play there. It's a, it's a great big data play. Uh, that's my job. In addition, we built together a pretty large operating team, half a dozen full-time people. If you need a CFO, we can have it. If you need a recruiter for your company, we have somebody who had 30 recruiters working for her, helping one of these companies grow rapidly. Now she's there to help our entrepreneurs. Uh, I mentioned we have hired somebody for PR, a CFO, yeah. somebody who can run manufacturing operations. We love hardware startups if you're doing hardware. Yeah. So we're building a strong operating team to help entrepreneurs because our job is both at the tactical operational level in single skills as well as more broadly strategically, our job should be helping entrepreneurs become bigger, better, and to push them to greatness. Push them to the level of discomfort for the entrepreneur to be how great they can be. Thanks, Vinod. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody.